Hey, what's up, everybody? So today is Wednesday. It is about noontime, and I just got a service call for a walk-in cooler running too warm. This is gonna be on a rack system, so uh, we'll see if we can't get you some footage and um, see if we can't figure it out. But this is. Uh, so all the information we got right now, just it's a walking cooler running warm. So we'll see you when we get there, gents. Arrived at our case. Um, this is our case right now that we need to work on, D01. And it says we're running at about 35, 36. And thermometer says 37. It's going up because I opened this door and it's right here. So we're at temp. Uh, I believe the temperature set point is 34. All of our fans are running. All of our fans are running here. We seem to have a little bit of frost right there. That's not gonna. Uh, it's not gonna affect our performance. Coil seems to be clear. So this is not our issue. I mean, yeah, we're running about 30, let's just say 37, set points 34. So this is A. So the funny thing is that I've already heard from another technician that this region this little reaching case is has the same refrigeration uh, condenser as the walk-in cooler. So let's give it a minute and see what temperature we're getting in here. Guys, um, so this one says it's running at about 35, 36 degrees. So that's not bad at all. Let's go ahead and go up to the uh, controller up at the E2 and uh, let's find out. Let's take a look at our graph and see what we're doing. See what this case is doing, why why it alarmed today, so. All right guys, we're here at the rack. So that system is on its own condensing unit. So we're gonna go to menu, circuit, number three. And then we're gonna look for D01 down. There it is. D01 and D01B. So we're going to go to that. Okay, so that is at 33 degrees. Uh, first thing I notice is this right here. I got a 5 degree difference between one case and the other. That's not good. So we need to verify these sensors, make sure that they're actually reading correctly. And so let me see, 33, 35, 31, and then let's go to the reach in. 31 degrees. Alright, so the reach in is 31. Alright, so we're at the this is the reach in beer cooler and looks like this one had a lot more uh, see this one set a little too low running right about 32 degrees and here so this one right here went into defrost at 11 30 same time and then it looks like it just came about 34 degrees so that's not bad so let's go, let's go ahead and verify these sensors uh, at the case with what they're reading here and then we'll uh, we'll take it from there. So this is another thing I'm checking right now. I just went to my alarm and so today the walk-in cooler went into high limit but also look at this. The four-door beer cooler is going off on alarm on low limit. So uh, we need a first step, it's going to be verify the sensors. 
second step is we gotta verify that this beer case, the four door reach in, uh, has a properly set EPR valve. And then we're gonna have to look at the uh, at the big picture. So let me go back out there and check the sensors. Right, these temperatures with the uh, maintenance guy. So this one is reading absolutely accurate. So this temperature is not an issue. The issue that I'm seeing is, I'll go ahead and post a picture of the temperatures. So the issue that I'm seeing is that one of these coils is warmer than the other. I don't want to say the coil, but the actual air it's sensing. They're both accurate. Both of the sensors are accurate, but I have a five to six degree difference between that side of the walk-in and this side of the walk-in. This is my return. This is the coil, or this is the air that's sensing uh, warmer. That one's reading colder. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna go up to the condensing unit and I just wanna make sure that the condensing unit is operating properly before I start digging into, into checking what can be causing problems here and making that one warmer and this one colder. So before I do any of that craziness and start going down a rabbit hole, I'm gonna just go check on the condenser and I'm just gonna make sure that the condensing unit is, is absolutely running properly. D01 beer. And this is the reason why I wanted to come up here. Got both fans running. So we got both fans running. Take a look at our sight glass. That's why I wanted to check the condensing unit before we start messing with superheats and uh, return and supply temps, all that good stuff. So let me go ahead and hook up to this and we'll find out what's going on. All right guys, so I just hooked up to the unit and as you can see, our pressures are not uh, very friendly, to be honest with you. Um, if you look at our suction pressure, uh, we're running about a one degree uh, evaporator saturation, which is, uh -oh, which is extremely low. And, um, you know, we should be running about maybe a 20 degree evaporator coil. So our ambient temperature is approximately 83 degrees. And as you can see, our head pressure condensing temperature is about 86 degrees. So I can almost guarantee you that as soon as the temperature drops a bit, we're going to start bypassing on our headmaster. So we're at, we're at about 182 PSI. I'm surprised it's not very close to bypassing right now. But our suction is really low and our um, head pressure is pretty low and we are flashing at the side glass. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of charge in it. I just wanna make sure that we have a full solid column of liquid go into the evaporators before I start messing with superheats and all that. That should just be a standard rule of thumb. So let me go ahead and grab a jug um, and, um, and we'll start putting a little bit of gas in it, see if we can get some better pressures. All right guys, so we busted out the uh, 480s tonight. I think I've used these things like about four or five times in the last eight months that I've owned them. Uh, I'm lying about six months probably use them about four or five times uh, But anyways, I've already purged my hoses coming from the unit and I'm about to purge my uh, Charging hose right here. So just open it up a bit here. You can hear that We just make getting all the air out this way And then we're good to go Let me close this off And remember that all 400 refrigerants go in as a liquid Baby over, one handed. Woohoo! All right, and uh, take a seat here. 
go ahead and take a look at our pressures. So, let's see, we're running about a. Oh, hold on, my bad. Let me change the refrigerator. I don't even know 449A is on here. Alright, so we're running about a three degree evaporator, that's way too low. And we're at about 82 condensing outdoor dry bulb. I'm just gonna kind of leave it right there. So the outdoor dry bulb is about 79 or so. Three degree evaporator, 82 um, liquid saturation that's way too we're just gonna charge it until we clear this side glass and once we clear the side glass uh, we'll go ahead and put some winter charge in and uh, we're gonna have to do a, a leak search so let's go ahead and start putting some in right here liquid make sure everything else is shut off go ahead and crack it open Let me go ahead and do that until our head pressure is a little more stable and uh, I'll get right back to you guys. All right guys, as you can see, the condensing unit satisfied. Um, I added, I don't know, <clears throat> a couple squirts. <clears throat> Probably about a pound or two. Uh, side glass is not clear yet. It is starting to clear up, but let me go ahead and uh, charge this up and then uh, we'll go back inside and uh, keep on testing all the other good stuff. All right guys, we're about to clear the side glass. So I am, uh, I'm gonna put in some, a uh, couple more uh, squirts and then uh, we're gonna throw in a little more winter charge. I'll be honest with you, I don't know how to calculate it and all that good stuff, but I am gonna give it enough to get it through the night and uh, possibly tomorrow we'll come back and do a uh, leak check and uh, go ahead and give it a little more gas and we'll get out of here. Right, guys i'm still adding uh, charge to the unit <clears throat> just a little side note my headphones were uh dying they started giving me the low low battery warning it's the little under armor um, jbl ones but anyways i wanted to show you this guys so get you this little milwaukee uh 12 volt battery charger you can actually uh plug this into the wall and charge your battery or use your battery to charge an accessory like your phone or your headphones just a little side note guys pretty cool stuff all right guys we have added approximately 25 pounds to the unit our vapor saturation is still looking pretty low and according to this supposed to have a 75 pound charge so you're gonna tell me that this was a third of the way empty hmm. um, nice little head scratcher here but can't quit so let me uh let me continue working on this just wanted to let you know it's already sucked up 25 pounds so yep all right guys so after we added refrigerant you can see our temperatures are a lot more even on the walk-in cooler. But now, we got a problem on our beer cooler. We're in 29 degrees. It's set for 34. So we're gonna have to see what's going on with this EPR and this uh, solenoid. Refrigeration solenoid on. That's not good. All right, guys, I have been doing some some research on this setup and let me tell you that they have a very, very awkward setup. So this is what we're going to do right now. Number one, I added refrigerant to the system. We killed an entire 25 pound bottle. I brought some more up just in case because it was still flashing. But this is what I'm going to do right now we so obviously the system is satisfied right now 
and I just went to the E2 and everything is satisfied on the E2. So for at this very moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack everything up and we're going to come back tomorrow and we're going to see what the reach in is doing and what the walk in is doing once. Now that we have refrigerant in it, I want to know what it's doing with a, I want to say I don't want to say proper charge, but with a better charge than it was earlier today. So this is actually going to stay here for tonight and I'll be back first thing tomorrow just to verify charge. But let me get off of this roof and then we'll go downstairs and I'll show you the um, the beautiful engineering design of how they have that set up. So let me get off this roof and I'll uh, see you downstairs. All right, guys. And this is why I wanted to give it some time. So you see right here, I got my walk-in cooler. My temp is 33. Now look at my four-door beer reach in 33. So now that we have refrigerant in the system, the, re the, the reach in is not satisfying or dropping temp a lot faster than the, than the walk-in. Walk-in beer, 34 degrees. And then look at my two temperatures. I had about a six degree differential when we were low on gas. And now we're doing a lot better. And then if we look at our four door beer, we're at 34 degrees. Now, if you notice, the is solenoid on, and our walk in, refrigeration solenoid, it's on now. Right? So let me show you why. <clears throat> we're back downstairs and let me show you why I was saying what I was saying so right there we got 35 degrees so far in this case now this is the way these cases are working so this is case D01B right there and then this is D01 so whenever whenever those evaporators inside call for refrigeration those ref those evaporators actually have a solenoid and an uh, EPR and an electronic EPR this case does not have a solenoid but it does have a manual EPR I think it has like an ORI valve so as long as these are calling for refrigeration this one will get refrigeration regardless of the temperature that's why earlier this one was at 28 degrees while this was at like 36 37. so that was with a low charge it's still somewhat low on charge but it is working a lot better so like i said these have an epr an electronic epr and their own uh, solenoid so if this calls for refrigeration then that case will get refrigeration regardless of the temperature. So this case is getting refrigeration raked. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna monitor this case overnight and I think it's actually working good because it's been like that for a while, so nothing's changed. There's no real reason to mess with it. The only thing we gotta do is come back and do a leak check and uh, possibly fix that if we find it. But if this case is having trouble overnight tonight um that that it's uh that the temperature drops too much while this one is still trying to maintain temp then i'm going to bring it up to my boss and see if we can't put a solenoid and a thermostat in this case so that this case can control its own temperature so that's about it gents i'm going to go ahead and place this call in a uh, follow-up status and as soon as uh, morning comes around back. and i'll verify everything if uh if we can continue making a video with some decent footage we will if not this will be the end of it guys thank you all for watching see you guys in the next one